everyone. Welcome to my super original thrift lift series where I, like many other people on YouTube, do this thing where we get secondhand items from thrift stores and attempt to make them more trendy and somehow make it look all easy but really struggle behind the scene to make it work while trying to film the whole process aesthetically. And shout out to that one subscriber that I have. So today, I'll be turning this shirt into this one that I've been seeing everywhere. It got everything that is cool these days. It got the smock bodice, the square neckline, and the puff sleeves. What more can you ask for? To start, I gathered all the ingredients, which included the original shirt. I also used a measuring tape, a pair of fabric scissors, some elastics, thread with matching color to the shirt, an empty bobbin for the elastic thread, the elastic thread itself, a ruler, and other things that I forgot to add when I put this montage together, which includes another bobbin for the regular thread, a fabric pencil, a sewing machine, an iron, pins, safety pin, hairpin, and water because don't be like me and work on this non-stop for 8 hours and got dehydrated because I forgot to drink any water. So I got this shirt for $5 and what drew me to it was the light blue color and the cuff details with these fabric covered buttons. To start, I removed the neck, cut out sleeves. Once those are removed, I kept the sleeves and I should have trashed the rest but since I'm a hoarder, I put in a special box hoping that they'll be useful one day and name myself every time I need to move. Next, I measure how long I wanted the shirt to be by measuring the top of my bust all the way down to where it is appropriate to have a shirt ends to show off my stomach that I not seen the sun for the past 9 months because of winter followed by pandemic without being too scandalous which turns out to be 10 inches. I add a half inch seam allowance and measure 10.5 inches away from the bottom of the hem, drew a line there, and drew another line 10.5 inches away from that line. I cut along the lines and also cut along the side seams here. I hoarded this piece. As for this piece here, I cut off the side to make it into a rectangle. I cut off one of the seams from this piece and joined the pieces together to make one big loop. Here, I'm using a searcher to keep the fabric from fraying, but you can use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine. I also add another stitch to reinforce the seam because I do not want any more wardrobe malfunction when wearing this shirt. Next, it was time to hem both ends. First, I rolled the hem about a sixth inch, pin it, and sewed it. I then fold it again, this time a quarter inch, pin it, and sewed it. I repeat the same for the other side but fold it a half inch on the second fold. Doing this gives a much better finish and I don't have the skills to do a rolled hem all at once on chiffon fabric. Once the hems are done, I use an iron to press them down. Next, it was time to start shirring. Let's pause here. Before this, I watched a bunch of tutorials and read a bunch of blog posts on how to do it. I thought I was ready, but damn. They made it look super easy, but I was on the struggle bus the whole time. This part took me a good 3 hours. I didn't film the struggle because I was too frustrated to think of the camera angles and turn the camera on. In the end, I did figure out a way to do it without a lot of hassles, and here is how. First, I wound the bobbin by hand while making sure not to pull on the elastic. I put the bobbin back in its place in the sewing machine and thread it up normally. I started the first row right against the hem. And here was the first mistake that I made. I had the right side of the fabric face down when it should have been facing up. I made this mistake twice and had to pick the stitching by hand, which was not fun. Once I learned that lesson, I thought it was going to be smooth sailing from there, but boy, was I wrong. My top thread kept on snapping, and I figured out that if I stretched the fabric out from the top and bottom and gently guide the fabric through the machine, the thread did stop snapping. And at the end of each row, I tied the regular thread on one side and the elastic thread on the other side and cut off the extra thread so that everything is secure without the bulk. After three long and excruciating hours of me sharing and watching Netflix on the background, this was the result. To be honest, this is super cute and I really love how it looks. Was it worth the three hours of frustration and pain? I say so. <laughs> oh boy. Next on the chopping block were the sleeves. First, I measured how long I needed the outer part and the inner part of the sleeves to be, added an inch allowance for each measurement, and marked them down on the sleeve. I drew the squiggly line and cut it out. I then laid it on the opposite sleeve and cut that one out to make sure they're both symmetrical. I folded the raw edge about a sixth inch, pinned it, and sewed it. Next, to make a tunnel for the elastic, I folded about a quarter inch and pinned it. I made two marks, each two inches away from the inner seam of the sleeve. I sewed from one mark to the other mark, 
I then grab 12 inch of elastic, safety pin one end, and put the other end on a hairpin. I thread it through the tunnel, and zigzag stitch both ends. I then attach the sleeve to the tube. I repeat the same thing for the other sleeve, and this was the result. I think it came out super cute, super on trend. I'm not gonna lie and say it was super easy, but I'm a beginner sewer and hopefully I'll improve as this series goes on. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.